A newly discovered planet could destroy Earth as soon as this month, reports the New York Daily News. This month! Thank goodness I learned about this before I paid my taxes. What could this headline possibly mean? If you're anything like me, your first thought was that there's a random planet hurtling through space on a collision course with Earth like a bloated asteroid, and the only thing that can possibly save us now is Bruce Willis leading a plucky band of miners to blow it to pieces. This is actually a well-known fear, referred to usually as the Nibiru Cataclysm, and it was first proposed by a woman who came upon this information because aliens were communicating with her telepathically and warned her about it. As you might guess, there is absolutely no truth to this complete and utter myth. But no, in this case, the news reports are actually referring to a recently discovered planet that is floating around in the outer reaches of our solar system. And according to these news reports, Every time it orbits past the Oort cloud, it grabs a few of the many comets that are floating around there and starts hurtling them at Earth. And every 26 to 27 million years or so, this results in an extinction level event. And we're, I guess, due and it's going to happen this month. Scary, right? I mean, until you look at the details, which is what we're going to do now. The source of these claims is one Daniel Whitmire, who The Sun says is of the University of Louisiana. It should say formerly of the University of Louisiana, where he was an astrophysicist. He's retired now, and he is a math instructor at the University of Arkansas. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but maybe we should get some of the facts right in this case. Whitmire's hypothesis is one that he's actually been pushing for many years now, long before any recent planet discovery. And he came up with that hypothesis as a way to explain why there seems to be an extinction level event on Earth every 26 to 27 million years. And I say seems to because that hypothesis doesn't even have a scientific consensus. There's a lot of support for the idea that every 30 million years or so, there is some sort of large impact on the Earth, but it's not fully accepted. It's still considered a bit controversial. If it is happening, there are several different hypotheses for why it is. Uh, one is that it's just a coincidence. Another is that it coincides with the time when our sun moves through a particularly bumpy part of the Milky Way on its own orbit. And yeah, a third is Whitmire's hypothesis that there is a very large gas giant at the edge of our solar system hurtling rocks toward us on its regular orbit. The problem is that Whitmire's hypothesis has already been carefully considered, so carefully that NASA used the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer to search for this large gas giant. It would have been very far away, but it is big enough to be observed. And in 2014, NASA announced conclusively that they had absolutely no evidence that it exists. But also in 2014, scientists started finding evidence of a ninth planet just beyond Neptune, much smaller and much closer to the sun than Whitmire's original hypothesized planet. However, Whitmire took these new observations and used them to rework his old hypothesis. He published a paper in late 2015, just before Mike Brown and Constantine Batygin uh, released their new findings showing that the planet that they were indirectly observing just beyond Neptune couldn't possibly be the same one that Whitmire was hoping would work for his hypothesis. The actual much more likely to exist Planet 9 is way too small and close to the sun to get anywhere near to affecting the Oort cloud objects. In fact, it's about 10 times closer to the sun than Whitmire's original hypothesis. Also, Whitmire's original planet would have taken 1.8 million years to orbit, while the new Planet 9 only takes about 10,000 years to orbit. That means that if Whitmire's hypothesis is correct, then this planet would be firing extinction level rocks at Earth so often that humanity never would have made it past the single cell phase. 
So to sum up, Whitmire had a good hypothesis that was proven incorrect. And now he's scrambling to rework that hypothesis to fit the new evidence, but unfortunately, it just doesn't. And the paper he published was out of date the moment that it got any traction. And I can actually sympathize with a retired astrophysicist trying to keep his one claim to fame relevant, but I really can't get behind him giving interviews and allowing these news outlets to make these ridiculous fear-mongering pronouncements about the end of humanity without doing anything to correct them. That is unbelievably shitty. And so what about all of this, the human race is doomed by the end of the month nonsense? Well, I can't even find Whitmire claiming that level of bullshit. The only source that I could find cited by The Sun was, and I quote, some. That's right, here is in its entirety what The Sun had to say regarding the specifics of the world ending by the end of the month. Uh, now some are convinced there will be a collision or a near miss before the end of April. That's it. I'm not making that up. Some. I'm not convinced. So I don't know about you guys, but unfortunately, I have made the decision to pay my taxes. <laughs>